Thank you very much. What a pretty song. Will you pray with me, please? Holy and beautiful God, we ask this morning that you do change us. Change us so that we do become more like you. That we show our face of love and compassion and kindness to all people of this world, just as you show to us. And therefore, we ask that you speak into our hearts and form our minds and our souls this morning so that we may do what you would have us do. As in all things, we pray this prayer in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. Do you remember your dreams? I was asked that once, and I remember thinking, it depends on which dreams you are talking about. You know, there are dreams that we have for our lives, starting pr probably with the dreams of our youth. Dreams we had for the things we hoped would happen to us in life, like happiness, good relationships, wealth, a whole list of things. For there is hardly a limit to youthful dreams. And then there are daydreams, which are a bit more like drifting thoughts, I think. Those things we let our minds wander off to several times a day. And these types of dreams, daydreams, I think they too are limitless. And a lot of times it is these dreams that we, we do not remember. I mean, have you ever caught anyone or been caught yourself just sort of sitting around daydreaming and somebody asks you, you know, what are you thinking about? And you say with all honesty, I don't know. <laughs> just sitting here. And then there are the dreams that occur when we are asleep. And these are different a little bit. For these dreams are not influenced by any conscious thought on our part whatsoever. Daydreams and youthful dreams, whether we remember them or not, you know, we're awake have the potential, at least, to, to think about them while they're happening. But not so with the dreams of our slumber. Our minds have gone to sleep, or so we think. I have always been interested in sleep and dreams not just because I like to do it so much, but why we sleep and why do we dream. You know, we sleep primarily because our bodies need rest. Muscles need to relax. Cells inside of us need to regenerate. And even our minds need this period of slowing down. And we call that period sleep. When along with our bodies, we think our minds are also at rest. Except when we are dreaming. You know, you can hook someone up to electrical sensors when they are asleep, and, and those sensors will pray, stay pretty flat for the most part. You are indeed at rest until we start to dream. And then those sensors start to do quite a dance on the paper. Our mind is not at rest. It becomes very busy, all on its own, for we are not actively thinking about anything. 
And this is where it gets interesting. For, you know, we can measure, while we can measure brain activity when we're asleep with these electrodes and everything, we cannot explain why our brains are so busy when we sleep. I mean, for the most part, unless you sleepwalk or something like that, our, our bodies don't get up and start dancing around when we're asleep. Only our brains enter into all this activity. And no one can explain why. No doctor or scientist or psychologist can tell you why this happens. And there are several theories, and some of them make a whole lot of sense. But I believe every honest doctor or scientist or psychologist will, will tell you that they are just that, good theories. Are our minds, you know, simply processing all the stimuli that entered in during the day, using our sleep as as time for sort of a, you know, mental house cleaning? Is it just random electrical activity getting out of the way? Or, as a psychologist might say, is it, is it a way for our subconscious to, to try to figure things out uh, without us? You know, things we could not figure out on our own during the day and is now giving it a shot while we're asleep. All of those sound plausible, and there may be truth in all of them. Except, what about recurring dreams? Dreams that we have over and over again. I mean, sometimes since we were little children. That ex those explanations don't quite explain that. And what about all the dreams we have that simply make no sense? I think most of us could probably relate to one another a few dreams we do remember because they're so odd. You know, with peoples and place, people and places and things that have absolutely no relationship whatsoever to anything we do in our waking lives. And often include things that would be absolutely impossible in the world we inhabit in our waking lives. What about those dreams? I mean, why would our minds process things like this when they have no correlation to anything we've actually experienced? and nothing we've really thought about. I don't think about those odd things when I'm awake. I mean, can you remember dreams like that? Have it, people have had those dreams too? <laughs> Recurring dreams, weird dreams, dreams that we do remember because of, asleep or not, they have a, a pretty profound effect upon us. Well, like I said, I have always been very interested in these things. Fascinated would actually be a better word. For I, I do remember some of my dreams, and they baffle me. And another thing, you know, sometimes when I wake up and I know I've been dreaming, I'm exhausted. <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> I mean, like physically exhausted. Like I just ran a marathon. And believe me, I have no factual experience of what it feels like <laughs> to run a marathon. Only my dreams do. <laughs> so there I was this past week, sitting around, thinking about dreams, probably daydreaming about them, and whether or not there's any meaning to our dreams. And I remembered that dreams throughout history have often been considered not just random mental activity, 
but a real form of communication that happens between ourselves, our mind, and the rest of us, and God, who so often gets drowned out during the day. Henry David Thoreau, famous poet, said once that that dreams are the touchstones of our characters. The illustrations from the book our souls are writing about us. I like that part. And Carl Jung, the uh, you know, are so instrumental in our modern understanding of psychology. He wrote that our greatest goal in life should be to remember the age-old fact that God speaks to us chiefly through dreams. I wonder if we can still believe that in our modern world, in a world that values the weight of scientific measurement over things like the content of our dreams? Can we still believe in things like souls and angels and angels of the Lord who commune with us in that time when we set ourselves to rest? Well, I don't mind telling you that my answer is a wholehearted yes. I can still believe in those things. I actually have no problem whatsoever reconciling all the wonderful things you know our human minds can do and achieve, things that we hook sensors and electrodes up to, and, and even our minds themselves that can spend hours philosophizing about all the great questions of the universe. I have no problem reconciling all of that intelligence with what I think is the most profound fact in the universe of all. That God still wants to talk to us. Each and every one of us. No matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've left undone in life, no matter if all your youthful dreams have wondrously been fulfilled, Or as the song says, perhaps your life has killed those dreams you dreamed. God comes to us knowing all about our lives, all about our dreams, spoken, unspoken, hidden away. God comes to us in our waking hours and in our sleep, and God speaks. And the great part is God already knows what it is we need to hear. Do we need to hear about finding a safe harbor in the storms of our lives? God knows. Do we need to find strength within ourselves to to face head-on those things that have terrorized us for most of our lives? God knows. Do we need to be reminded that all of our worries are but ice that will melt away when we remember that it's only kindness and justice and love that bring us into harmony with ourselves and others? God knows. When Jacob fell asleep one night, He saw a ladder stretching from heaven all the way down to earth. And on it were angels of the Lord, descending and ascending. And the Lord said to Jacob, I am with you wherever you go. And I will not leave you until I have done everything that I've promised you. When Joseph fell asleep one night, An angel of the Lord came to him and said, Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. 
She's going to give birth, and together you will care for the one whom God is saving to sa- is sending to save all the people from their sins. Two very different dreams and very different messages. And you know, I think we often think that, that dreams are just that, something that came to us in the night and not to be remembered. But I think that what we think are just dreams are actually God's plans. Jacob moved into action by his dream would follow God for the rest of his life even getting a new name because of this, Israel the one through whom everything we know about God was established. And Joseph, Joseph, after having his dream, well, Joseph would become the earthly model of a father's love for his children, protecting and caring for not only Mary and Jesus, but all of those in the family that he inherited. God can and will use whomever God chooses to bring about his plans. And the thing is, the one that gets us every time, the people God chooses may not be the people we would choose. I mean, think about it. Jacob, if you remember Jacob's story a little bit, he was a thief quite a scoundrel. And when we meet him in the story this morning, falling asleep out somewhere on the road, it's because he's on the run from all the serious transgressions he's done in life and the things he did against his own family. He's running away. But God saw him sleeping there, knowing what it is he needed to hear and told him about it. Joseph. Well, you can't really say Joseph was a bad guy. By all accounts, he was a pretty decent guy. But perhaps a little too decent. Too legalistic. Following all the rules, written down rules, just a little too closely. Ready to dismiss Mary when she became pregnant which ultimately would have mean, meant dismissing God as well. But God, God saw him sleeping one night after he thought about all this and, and came to Joseph in a dream, and the story of salvation of the world had its beginning just as God had planned all along. So I still wonder about dreams. And I've got to tell you, if I start to think too much about it, I can become a little disgruntled that my dreams don't seem to be as clear as Jacob's and Joseph's. They're very scattered. And my goodness, you know, please, with all humility, don't ever ask me to try to interpret your dreams. That would be even worse. But I do want to leave us with a good thought this morning. And that is the absolute assertion that God has been breaking through all of our barriers that we put up in our waking hours since the beginning of time just to speak to us. And sometimes that means speaking to us in the quiet of the night when God can have our complete minds, bodies, and souls to himself for a change. So think about it. Do you remember your dreams? It's nice if you do. But in the end, 
remember this, that it is in God's dreams that our dreams come true. Amen? Amen. Amen. Will you pray with me, please? Holy God, we want to thank you this morning for raising us up once more from our sleep, bringing us into this holy place, and speaking to us once more through word and song and silence, where we can try to tune our minds and souls into your mind. So God, we ask that you you speak into us and let us know your dreams for us. We ask that you speak into all of those hearts and souls this morning that are not at peace. We ask you to speak into all of those of us this morning and those around the entire world who suffer this morning, body, mind, and soul. Send your Spirit into each and every one of us, for it is your Spirit that can heal. And God, we simply ask that you be with us. Lead us each and every day so that we know the path we are on is the path you lay before us. And we say that we trust you in this. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. My friends, let us take a moment of silence and allow God to have a word with us.